What's good, R&B squad? This is Art of Ruth. I trust that this message meets you guys in good spirits. If you are new here, this family is very happy to have you, and Jesus is, of course, always happier. So this is going to be a lengthy word. If this word is for you, be prepared to hang out with me for a little bit, okay? Hang out with me and BBJ, Big Brother Jesus, for a little while because this is going to take some time. I have to break this down very carefully. In addition to that, it is very detailed. It is a detail. God got very detailed with this word. So there is no way that you're going to be able to say this is for you if it's not. And there is no way you're going to be able to say it's not for you if it is. Because the details that God gave me are so specific that once you get to listening, you're going to know that this is your situation. Okay? So... It came from a dream that I had, and then I sat with the Lord, and he showed me some stuff in the spirit, all right? In the dream, there was a gentleman, but before I even get into the dream, let me just say that this is for two people who are ordained to be together. God has put the two of you together. You know that this is your God-ordained husband. He knows that you're his God-ordained wife. This message is going to address both the man and the woman. So there's going to be a part for the male and there's going to be a part for the female. So if you're a male listening to this and this word is for you, there's a part for you. I'm going to address that part first. And if you're a female listening to this, I'm going to address the part for you after I address the part for the male. Okay. So that being said, I had this dream. The dream in and of itself was very brief. But there were a lot of little details that I caught in there. And then when I sat with the Lord, he broke it all down for me and showed me some stuff, revealed some stuff to me in visions as well. All right. In this dream, there was a gentleman. He had his phone in his hand. And at the same time that he had his phone in his hand, there was a female who also had a phone in her hand. Now, the phone that she had was an iPhone, and the phone that he had was also an iPhone. Pay attention to that. That is a very important detail, okay? All of the messages that were meant for this man to receive, this woman was receiving it on her phone. She was receiving it on her device, okay? And there was a password involved. I remember hearing specifically the word password, passcode. So I heard the word password, and I also heard the word passcode. All right? So the reason that these messages that were meant for this man were going to this woman's phone had something to do with the passcode or the password. All right? And then the man, he had the passcode changed. And all of the messages that he had not been receiving previously, they started coming into him. So he was missing out on very important messages. People were trying to reach him and could not. And it was because this woman had been receiving all of the messages instead of him and preventing him from receiving them. And that was the end of the dream. Okay, when I sat with the Lord, he broke some things down for me. If this is for you, sir, if you're listening to this and this is for you, for the brother in Christ whom this is for, there is a woman that you were involved with. You were either married to this woman and you're in the process of finalizing the divorce right now or the two of you are already divorced or you were in a long-term relationship with this woman. It's one of the two scenarios, okay? This may also be for two different men who do not, you guys may not know each other at all. One of you may have been married and currently in the process of wrapping up a divorce or you're already divorced and one of you may have been in a long-term relationship, okay? Either way, this woman that you were involved with was very heavily entwined in your life. She was very heavily intertwined in all of your affairs, okay? There may have been a job description that she held as well that gave her access to certain things. So the two of you may have been working together at some point. You may have had your own business, your own company. She may have been working alongside you. 
okay, if this is for you. And this was the excuse that she used to have access to your devices. You have an iPhone. That's the phone you have. God was very clear about that. This individual also, she's fond of Apple devices, okay? So she may have an iPhone as well. The computer that you guys use, the laptop that you guys use for business purposes may have been a MacBook, okay? It's a lot of Apple devices that I was shown in the spirit. And how this woman has been doing this, what she's been doing is that she has been interfering in this man's life, keeping tabs on him, literally stalking him, cyber stalking him, stalking him in real life, keeping up with his messages, keeping up with his phone calls, keeping up with his whereabouts. And she has been doing this, pay close attention to this, because even if you're the woman, you're this man's God-ordained spouse, and you're listening to this, this information is going to be very important for you as well, all right? What this man did not know is that this woman had access to his iCloud password. And if you have access to someone's iCloud password, if you're sharing an iCloud account with them, they basically have access to everything on your iPhone. They have access to your location, your photographs, your contacts, your text messages, practically everything. Okay? So through your iCloud this woman has been keeping tabs on you. She's been watching your every move. She's been watching where you've been going. There is a setting in there where you can actually forward text messages from one device to another. She has forwarded your text messages to her device. So every time a text message comes in for you, she receives it. And you were wondering why this woman was all in your business, how she found information about certain things. This is what she's been doing. Okay? She's been listening in on all of your phone calls as well. So your privacy and what I was shown in the spirit is that this has been going on for years. This didn't just start happening. This has been going on for years. And even though the two of you are not together anymore, because it started when you were together, even though you're not together anymore, even though you may be in the process of finalizing a divorce or you may be divorced or you may have separated from her if the two of you were just in a relationship and you weren't married, this woman is still doing this. She still has access to your iCloud account. Okay? She may have been working with you up to recent times, or she may still be working with you. So she has access to devices that you guys use for work. She has been using these devices to keep tabs on you. So everything that has been passing through your iCloud, very sensitive information, personal information, personal messages that have been sent to you from other people, she has been receiving them. And she's been using it to harass you, okay? I saw in the spirit as well that you have been receiving threatening messages unbeknownst to you that it was this woman that was behind it. She was actually using fake accounts and she would send you harassing messages. And in these messages, there would be details from conversations that you had in private with other people. And she was able to access those details from your iCloud. So this has been going on for some time. But what this woman doesn't know, what she doesn't realize is that, you see, she's not the sharpest tool in the shed according to what I was shown in the spirit. This man is a man who has many, many connections. You are well connected. Some of the people that you're connected to are cybersecurity professionals. Okay, I am seeing that you're connected to cybersecurity professionals from international agencies, international companies. So all you have to do is make one phone call. That's all you have to do. And you're already... The thing is, I was shown in the spirit that you're already aware that this is happening. You're already aware that your, vi your privacy is being violated and you want to find out why. All you have to do is make one phone call. And all of the evidence that you're looking for that this woman has been doing this to you, 
you're going to be able to access it because of your connections. So when this woman did this, she wasn't being very smart because she neglected to think of the fact that you are so well connected. And then also I'm seeing that the woman of God, that God, God chose to be your wife, she's well connected and she doesn't play either. She does not play either. So if she gets to finding out about this now, it's some phone calls that she's going to make on your behalf as well. Now, let me tell you how much trouble this woman that has been doing this to you can get into, how much legal trouble she can get into. There have been messages that your family members send to you in private. There has been messages that business associates of yours send to you in private, sensitive information that were not meant, that information was not meant for a third party. She has been listening in and receiving messages for all of these things. So she has all of this information. And if these people get to finding out that this information was accessed without you knowing by a third party, she is going to be in a lot of legal trouble because it's multiple people, multiple people that are going to be coming for her legally, including a lot of your business associates. And what she's going to do, what I was shown in the spirit is that she's going to try to wipe the evidence. So once she gets wind of the fact that you know what's going on and you know she's been accessing all of your information by her iCloud account, she's going to go in there and try to undo everything she did. So she's going to go and try to, since she forwarded the text messages to her device, she's going to try to disable that setting. She's going to try to disable the location settings and all of the above so that she can cover her tracks. But what sis doesn't know is this. You cannot erase anything from an iCloud account. You cannot permanently erase anything as long as it's on there. Baby, it's on there. It is on there. And if a cybersecurity professional gets hold of it, then all of your activity, including them little threatening messages that she sent to you, threatening emails that she sent to you, all of that has been stored on the iCloud because she connected your devices. And this is what is so stupid about this. She connected your devices and then used one of those devices to send you threatening emails. So even that, a replica of the threatening emails and the device that it came from is on the iCloud. All of that information is on the iCloud and the right cybersecurity professional can access it. So this is going to be in a lot of legal trouble. A lot of legal trouble. And what I sense in the spirit is that this man is going to pursue a course of legal action against this woman. I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know if he's going to seek a restraining order. I don't know what it's going to look like. But she is going to be in a lot of legal trouble. And there is no way for her to cover her track. She's going to try, but there's no way for her to do it. I also sense very strongly in the spirit that this woman is very narcissistic. And you see, that's the issue with the narcissists. They always think that they're the exception to the rule. So they think that certain things don't apply to them. She did not think about the fact that she was leaving a digital thumbprint on all of her activity by interfering with your iCloud account the way she did. She did not stop to think about that. And so now, the more she tried to stalk you and interfere in your private affairs, the more she implicated herself legally into problems, serious legal problems, okay? So if you're a brother in Christ and that was for you, you're going to know that was for you because like I said, it was, God got very detailed. He got very, very detailed. But on the other side of this, you're going to come out of this on top. You're going to come out. I'm seeing that God has intentions to bless this brother in Christ greatly. You're going to come out on top. All of this stuff that this woman did to try to block you, to try to cut off your connections, because she did a lot. None of what she did is going to prosper. None of it is going to take sprout. She may have thought it took root, but it's not going to sprout. 
God has already declared over your life that he intends to bless and increase you greatly. Okay, so there's that. Now, for the woman, the woman who is connected to this man, and I'm not talking about the one, I'm not talking about the ex, I'm not talking about the counterfeit. This is for the God-ordained wife now, all right? And for you, the Lord took me to the book of Ruth. So I'm going to read the book of Ruth, chapter 3, because I know I put the scripture in the, 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 the description box, and some of y'all don't read it. <laughs> some of y'all probably you just look at it and you don't. But sometimes you really need to get in there and read the scripture. So I'm going to read it to you guys. It's going to be a bit long, but I am going to read it because... There are points that need to be made. So let me just pull it up there. All right, here we are. We're at Ruth chapter 3. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? So this is when Naomi gets to planning how she's going to hook Boaz and um, Ruth up, okay? And now, well, not hook them up, but make sure that they get married. And now is not Boaz of our kindred with whose maidens thou wast? Behold, he winnoweth barley tonight in the threshing floor. Wash thyself therefore and anoint thee and put thy raiment upon thee and get thee down to the floor, but make not known make not thyself known unto the man until he shall have done eating and drinking. And y'all know that is one of our favorite verses around here. And it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie, and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet, and lay thee down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. And she said unto her, All that thou sayest unto me I will do. And she went down onto the floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn. And she came softly and uncovered his feet and laid her down. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and turned himself, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast shown more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requirest, for all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. Woman of God, let me pause right there. This brother, never mind the fact that he's going through all that he's going through, do not think that he does not see you. He knows that you're a woman of virtue. He knows that you've been sitting there waiting on him, waiting on him to clear all of this mess up so that the two of you can get your lives together and get your lives together with God. All right. He knows that you're a woman of God. And now it is true that I am thy near kinsman. Howbeit there is a kinsman nearer than I. Tarry this night and it shall be in the morning that if he will perform unto thee the part of a kinsman well. Let him do the kinsman part, but if he will not do the part of a kinsman to thee, then I will do the part of a kinsman to thee as the Lord liveth. Lie down until the morning. And she lay at his feet until the morning, and she rose up before one could know another. And he said, Let it not be known that a woman came into the floor. So he was watching Ruth's back all the time. He was making sure that nobody could say anything negative about her before they were married or after they were married. Also he said, Bring the veil that thou hast up on thee, and hold it. And when she held it, he measured six measures of barley, and laid it on her, and she went into the city. And when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, Who art thou, my daughter? So now Naomi is getting excited. She's like, Sis, what happened? What happened, young sis? Are you engaged to this man now? Am I greeting you as an engaged woman, or are you still single, Ruth? And she told her all that the man had done to her. And she said, These six measures of barley gave he me. For he said to me, Go not empty unto thy mother-in-law. Then said she, Sit still, my daughter, until, until thou know how the matter will fall. For the man will not be in rest until he have finished the thing this day. My sister in Christ, this man is your Boaz. Despite what he's going through right now, just like Boaz did, he has some business that he needs to, some loose ends that he needs to tie up. Okay? 
some loose ends that he needs to take care of. But as soon as he gets to taking care of that, and he will not rest until he does, as soon as he gets out, he completely gets rid of this woman who is trying to hang on like a parasite to his life, who is stalking him and harassing him. As soon as he puts her firmly in her place and he's in the process of doing that, and he's making sure that he does that so that it does not affect you when the two of you come together, best believe he's coming to get his wife. Best believe that he is coming to get his wife. So hold on there, Ruth. Hold on. I love you guys. I hope this message, I hope it confirms something for someone. I hope that you got your confirmation in here somewhere. And I will be back with another word as soon as the Lord releases me. Take care.